Her books are banned in China, and though born and raised there, she left her homeland in 1978 for a life in Britain. But author Jung Chang remains connected to her country of birth uh, through the subjects she's chosen to write about. Well, her 1991 bestseller, Wild Swans, was her personal memoir of life in China. A biography of Mao Zedong followed, and this year she's got a new book out on China's Empress Dowager Cixi, who ruled unofficially from 1861 to 1908. There you go, got some pictures there. We welcome this morning best-selling author Jung Chang. It's such a pleasure to have you in the studio with us this morning. Well, thank welcome. you very much for having me. <laughs> well, let's start off with Wild Swans, because that was written back in 1991, yes. a, a book about three generations of the women in your family, but also yes. a bit about the history of China. Yes. What compelled you to write that book? Well, I left China in 1978. In 1988, my mother came to London to stay with me. It was her first trip abroad, so she told me the stories of her life, the stories of my grandmother and my father. And once she started, she couldn't stop. She, when she left London, she left me 60 hours of tape recordings, wow. and I started <laughs> writing Wild Swans. I see. Were you surprised at the reaction and the response that it get? I mean, it's a wildly popular book. Um, you know, when, I, um, uh, uh, when the book was published, um, I didn't consciously didn't think about how the book would be received. So I had no expectations. I mean, one, uh, my, my mother said that um, I was not worried about how the book would mm -hmm. be received because um, I had made her happy. I mean, you know, she <laughs> could feel I, t I loved her more. Mm -hmm. and, and so my mother took away the anxiety Right. Um, from me about the publication and of course it's wonderful and the book is mm. a success. Right. I understand that when you were writing Wild Swans and you were doing research for it that was when you came across um, Empress Dowager Cixi and that's where the interest to write this book came about. Is that right? Some 20 years ago? Uh, um, I didn't at that time 20 years ago um, I didn't actually want what wasn't thinking about writing mm. about uh, Empress Dowager Cixi but um, it did s strike me that she was an extraordinary woman because my grandmother had bound feet you know crushed and bound feet and because I was educated in, in Mao's China somehow I thought the communist had the banned foot binding but then I realized that it was the Empress Dowager who had banned foot binding right. at mm. the beginning of the 20th century so I that was different from the image she was portrayed which was she was a die-hard conservative arch despot and so on and so I registered her mm. Well, is that what led you down this path? Because as you mentioned, the, 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 the image you portray of her in this book seems quite different from what people have out there, the, the impression of her. I mean, as you mentioned, she, you know, critics say that she was a diehard conservative, but mm. you're saying she actually led the way in many things. Oh, yes. Um, when I started researching about her after the publication of my next book, The Biography of Mao, and I realized that she, was, um, she wasn't... Uh, die-hard conservative. She introduced all the reforms that of a modern society which we are enjoying today. I mean she brought medieval society into the modern age. Mm -hmm. if, if I you want me to go on? Yes. I mean she, you know, she brought in electricity, modern industries, modern way of mining, um, telegrams, the railway, a modern navy with ironclads, army, um, and political reforms as yes. well. A free press, a Western legal systems. Um, she abolished um, not only foot binding but death by a thousand cuts in this right. sort of medieval ways of punishment. And her last project was to turn China from an absolute monarchy into a constitutional monarchy with an elected parliament. Mm. In other words, she was going to give the Chinese the vote. Mm. Right, so very right. relevant to modern day China, don't you think? Well, I think <laughs> probably in her, in her last days, I mean, there are similarities to today's China. In both cases, you know, there have been decades of economic development, open door policy, rising aspirations. Uh, where do we go from here? 
and Empress Dowager Cixi chose to push forward. She rejected um, calls for her to clamp down on the mm -hmm. press, not to send people abroad to mm -hmm. study, mm -hmm. and um, she went ahead and pushed for constitutional monarchy. Right. Um, and unfortunately, she died when the project was just launched. So she was well ahead of her times, but is she recognized the same way in China? Do people see all these things that you've mentioned? Well, the thing is, you know, among Chinese scholars, actually, there is a tendency um, you know, through the masses and masses of documents that have been released after Mao's death from the late 1970s. Archivists and historians have been working on these, um, you know, just 12 million documents mm -hmm. in the first national archives and many other sources. And I think the consensus was there needs a re-evaluation of Cixi. Mm -hmm. But of course, in the society at large, in history books, she, she is still portrayed as this wicked woman who sort of dragged China right. behind, created the mess of China, and her um, you know, Republican successes rescued China from her. Why do you think she was so misunderstood in your view? Mm, well, um, I think the main reason, there were many reasons, but the main reason was uh, three years after she died, China became a republic. And the Republicans wanted to blacken her name mm -hmm. because the nationalists wanted to say Sun Yat-sen was the father of modern China and the communists wants to say Mao was the father of modern right. China and they don't want to give her the credit. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, well, let's touch on that because Mao Zedong, you also did write a book yes, about him and I did. Well, Wild Swans and that book uh, banned in China. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so what compelled you to write about him? And again, your approach uh -huh. was different from what I guess uh, everyone else was saying in that sense. Not everyone else. Uh, no, yeah. some well, people, not, okay. What the with me. <laughs> okay, well the thing is this, um, you know, I grew up in, in, on the Mao. Um, you know, I left China when I was 26. I mean, you know, I lived most of my young life on the Mao. And I, um, uh, so to, to write about Mao after Wild Swans seems to be the natural choice. Um, and as I got into the research, which my husband John Halliday and I did for 12 years, as we dug out all these documents and interviews and so on, and um, I got more and more fascinated about him. And Mao was a bad man, but he was a very good subject. Mm. Mm. Tell us a bit more about uh, the research that went into this book. It must have been quite a complex process. The Empress Dowager, mm. so she, yeah. That research is much easier than the research about Mao because there was and still is a, a lot of cover up about Mao. So we had to dig out every bit of information. Um, that's why it took 12 years. Mm. But with Empress Dowager Cixi, the documents have been released from the late 1970s. So people, scholars have done a lot of work and there were a lot of court correspondence, um, uh, eyewitnesses accounts, diaries, people's jottings and so on. And uh, all the imperial decrees are digitalized. Mm. So I, I was sitting in my London study and I could bring up, you know, imperial decrees wow. on my screen. Right. And so there is a wealth of documentary um, 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 a source. Mm -hmm. And so the, this book is entirely based on the documents. Mm. I mean, not, 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 no speculation, I mean, no, no rumors right. or yeah. legends. Yeah. Okay. But written in a very interesting way as well that, you know, grips the reader, I must say. Are, uh, you, are, oh you, yes. are you hoping <laughs> this will make its way into China and not, not be banned? <laughs> I, I do hope so. I keep my fingers crossed. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I just keep my fingers crossed. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And any other projects that you're working on at the moment? Can you uh, well, share any with us? I'm, at the moment, I'm translating the book into Chinese. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, as I translated my Mao biography into Chinese. I mean, Mao and Wao Swans are banned in China, but they are published in Hong Kong and Taiwan, yeah. mm -hmm. and many copies have gone into China. Right. And mainland tourists often go to Hong Kong and Taiwan to buy okay. banned books. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so I much know. for coming in and sharing us with that. Mm.
author Jung Chang there with us in studio and telling us more about her latest book uh, about Empress uh, Cixi. And of course, uh, it's going to be out in all good bookstores. You might want to pick up a copy and give it a read. I'm sure it's a very interesting read.